Hi, I'm Benton Stokes. And I'm Elaine O'Rourke. And this is Cocktail Theology live at the Nashville Cocktail Festival. Hey everybody, Benton here. So I just want to explain, this episode is not like uh, any other episode of Cocktail Theology you've heard. It was recorded almost entirely live at the Nashville Cocktail Festival last weekend. The theme of the evening was Art Deco. Folks were wearing flapper dresses and zoot suits and the music was sort of from the Gatsby era. And we were invited to make a cocktail that was made primarily from, or the basic ingredient was, Johnny Walker Red Scotch. So we came up with a a cocktail called the Thoroughly Modern, uh, which also included raspberry liqueur and some absinthe and some other yummy things to serve at our table. So while I was serving drinks, Elaine was doing Man on the Street interviews, and that's mostly what you're going to hear. People were, by and large, really friendly, really accessible, and willing to play along. And then, of course, as the night went on, the answers got a little more interesting and fun. Uh, Elaine was doing the interviewing. I was doing the pouring. Mostly you're going to just hear people answering our silly questions about God, heaven, alcohol, etc. You'll also hear us interject. Uh, Now and then we went back after listening and compiling all of the interviews, and we put little interjections in there, typical us kinds of comments that you'll hear. But this was a fun episode to make. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, This is Elaine and Benton go to the Nashville Cocktail Festival. So we're at the Nashville Cocktail Festival and things are just about to get started. So they're sort of getting started, getting started. And we just had one of the organizers come to us and say that all of those people that we invited to come and crash this thing and not pay for tickets couldn't come. So if you are within our listening range two weeks after we do this... (laughs) And you want to come down and crash the Nashville Cocktail Festival, we're really encouraging you to not do that. Yeah, don't do that. Just don't. It's getting pretty exciting. There's great music. So what else do you see? Well, we've got an interesting mix of sort of like spirits, companies, distilleries, distributors, things like that. And then we have us. (laughs) There's a nonprofit here, though. Yeah, there is a nonprofit called Live Empowered that we're excited to talk to. There's some area restaurants. There's like some up-and-coming bars and restaurants. There's a jazz bar next to us, which is awesome because jazz in Nashville is a wonderful thing. Yes, it is. The weather's amazing. We're under a pavilion that's sort of decked out with like white tooling and a crystal chandelier over us, which is pretty spectacular. But we're in East Nashville, which is kind of a hipstery enclave. So lots of young people with tattoos and bartender types, and uh, I think it's going to be a really fun time. This is one of the few times in our are getting arounds where I feel under tattooed. Yeah, and I really feel under tattooed. So you, you know, we can do something about that. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Let's, okay, folks, when you hear this, email us with ideas for Benton's first tattoo. Whatever you've got, we would love to hear it. It needs to be kind of both, both kind of gaudy and songy mm-hmm. and... Roller coaster. <laughs> well, you come up with something, and if if he is brave enough to do this, we will take pictures. We, we will. We will. <laughs> He'll we'll tag you in them. <laughs> and there will be lots of cocktails ahead of time, is what I'm thinking. Uh, so many cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> so many. Kayla Ellis. I'm with the 404 Kitchen. I'm the bar manager there. And um, we obviously are a giant whiskey bar. Uh, It's really fun, though, because we are doing craft cocktails. We are whiskey forward with a strong craft cocktail program. Uh, But we keep it simple and clean with really beautiful flavors, really beautiful craft, fresh juice, all of that good stuff. And we just came out with our new menu, too. So it's the time to come and see us. (laughs) Hey, guys. uh, I'm Sean Stewart. I run the uh, bar program over at Plaza Mariachi. And I'm here with uh, The Real McCoy. Uh, an amazing rum company, and we're doing a cocktail inspired by uh, Mary Prickard. Yes. Yep. Uh, so she had a cocktail based on her back in uh, Prohibition time, and we're just doing our kind of little play on it. Uh, she was the most influential and powerful uh, woman in Hollywood at that time, so we thought it was a perfect way to, to make a cocktail based on her. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Katie Wills. I'm the brand champion in Middle Tennessee for Jack Daniels Family of Brands. And today we're doing a build your own cocktail bar with our Jack Daniels Tennessee rye. It's 70% rye, so it's a little bit, it's less spicy than the most ryes on the market. So it'll be really fun. We have three cocktails that are recipes by Frankie. The guests will be able to make them or make their own with her guidance. So they won't be alone. We're not gonna leave you out there to muddle on your own, never muddle alone. Um, and then you get to name the cocktail if you'd like to. So it's gonna be a good time. We're really excited to be here. Hi, I'm Adelaide and I'm here to learn more about cocktails and also just to enjoy a really fun night to be able to dress up in the 1920s theme and uh, enjoy it well. You probably don't know that there was a woman in New Orleans named Adelaide Brennan and she was a lady in the 20s who did a lot of really fun stuff and my name's Adelaide and so I kind of learned more about her and uh, went to her cafe down in New Orleans and so this is my chance to be a part of I guess the legend of, of all the good things she did. So folks I don't normally want us to be videoed because it's me and I don't like to be videoed, but I so wish you could see Adelaide right now. She is wearing this eggplant, sparkly, swingy, fantastic kind of dress, dress, kind of a yeah. flat dress, and the rhinestones around her head. You really should be here to see Adelaide. So have a good time. Thanks for talking to us. My name's Erin. I'm the general manager at Durham Distillery. Uh, we make conniption gins. We're out of Durham, North Carolina. And tonight I'm doing a build your own gin and tonic bar. Uh, so we're going to have our house-made tonic an assortment of uh, accoutrements and uh, you get to pick which gin. So we have our American Dry, which is contemporary, uh, not so heavy on the juniper, more fresh floral citrus aspects. We joke and call it our gateway gin. And then uh, we've got the big boy, the Navy Strength. So if you want to dive a little deeper, so to speak, you can go that route. My name is Jordan Thompson. I'm the beverage director at Retrograde Coffee in East Nashville. Um, tonight we're doing something we're calling a Hickory Alexander. So it's a riff on a Brandy Alexander, um, but we're using a split base of Johnny Walker Red Scotch and Lustau Brandy. And then we're also uh, using uh, Elmhurst Nut Milks, their uh, Barista Edition Oat Milk in that. And then the uh, St. George Nola Coffee Liqueur, some, uh, some nutmeg, and then our friend uh, um, Hales makes this awesome smoked hickory syrup. It's good stuff. I'm the videographer for Nashville Cocktail Festival. This year my direction is a full takeover of Nashville. Like we've been, this is our sixth event already and it's not just now the weekend. It's just going to be lots of lots of fun and you guys look great. <laughs> well, my name is Caleb Douglas and I'm a bartender at Rudy's Jazz Room. Uh, so I have two. I am featuring a blood and sand riff. It's called Years of Blood and Sand. So I compiled a couple years of different uh, blood and sand recipes. Uh, and then I have a Morning Glory Fizz, which is another Scotch cocktail that people would typically have in the mornings to start their day off with. So it's kind of oh, light, like bubbly. That. Yeah. Why haven't we been doing this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, you got to step it up. They were drinking hard <laughs> liquor back in the day. So... I'm Nathaniel Marins. I'm with a company called Stay Golden. Um, we are a restaurant and roastery, coffee roastery, and uh, but we have a full like bar program as well. Um, so I'm here doing a sort of like Boulevardier riff with some scotch and a couple other things. Hi, I'm Sean Caleb, the master distiller for Eldorado Rums, and I'm here tasting five of our beautiful range today: the three, the five, the eight the 12, 15, the 21. So come on over and enjoy some great Eldorado rum. So, so you're tasting out the 15 and the 21? Absolutely. Okay, so I may be staying over at the Eldorado table. Don't tell Benton anybody. Thanks. I am with Americanos, and I'm actually their consultant. I just came on and did a new menu with them. We're getting ready to release it very, very soon. It's um, very European style with a strong, like, New World American uh, influence. And actually, we're pulling from, since every single cocktail is a piece of artwork, all of our cocktails are named after classic European artist artwork. So it's super fun. Right now, we've chosen Salvador Dali, and that's kind of like our inspiration. It's super cool, and um, I cannot wait. It's a gin and sherry bar. It's one of the really first strong gin and sherry bars in Nashville. Okay. So it's going to be really fun. Hey, welcome. Hi, I'm Elaine. Hi, Lee, nice to meet you. So we're a podcast called Cocktail Theology, and we're asking absurd questions of people tonight if they're interested in talking. So you want to grab a piece of paper and answer the question? Sure. The question is, when you meet God, what's your first question? Yeah. Um, why do guys have nipples? What is a platypus? That's right. Not the, but what the hell is it? And yeah, but why? what's that little it's red? It's a platypus. Okay, but know. there's that it little... It lays eggs. It's a mammal. Oh. <laughs> well, it's got fur. It 
transfer and a duck bill. <laughs> he got confused. Why mosquitoes? Oh, what? Yes! Yes! I've actually thought about that and had discussions about this before, but the question changes from time to time. So I'm thinking at this point in life, I would like to say, to ask, what, what really is the meaning of life? Because here we all are doing all sorts of various things. Good things happen, bad things happen. So why did you create us? Why are we here? Why is the earth here and populated with all of us? Right here, we could have been somewhere else. We could have been aliens on Mars. What, what, is, what is the purpose for us after all? So I loved, loved the why do men have nipples? That just cracked me up. <laughs> it's sort of like, it's like the question, did Adam and Eve have belly buttons, right? Right. And the correct answer is no. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> and I love the platypus question too. And what we didn't what we didn't leave in was the ongoing colloquy that happened among this woman and her friends right. about the platypus. Right. That went on. And then there was some other fish that wasn't a fish. I don't remember that. I, anyway. I don't know. But then we get to the woman who asks the general, Why are we here? What is this all about? And so forth question. And then she says, We all could have been aliens on Mars. Now I am a bit of a skeptic <laughs> about there being anything recognizable as humanoid or life on Mars, mm -hmm. but that wasn't what bothered me about that particular thing. <laughs> what and bothered think, you? Well, I'm so glad you asked, Benton, <laughs> because what bothered me about it is if we were on that planet, and if it were us, still like us, we wouldn't be aliens on Mars. Right. We would be human beings, people, whatever, children of God, on our home planet, which would likely be Terra. Right. So the whole question gains this whole other meta it does. <laughs> thing going on, right? Where I know what she's getting at when she says that. Mm -hmm. we, we could have been something else. We could have done something else, whatever. Setting aside the Bible, setting aside whatever creation stories you go by, I have trouble with the logic of that. Right. I got really lost. <laughs> I wasn't drinking. And at that point, I thought, wait, we're not that far into this. Why am I so confused? <laughs> the lesson of all of this, do not get a, an advanced degree in philosophy because it will F you for the rest, <laughs> for of, the your rest life. of your life. <laughs> nice. Hi, God. Why the hell couldn't you have made me skinny? <laughs> My first question would be, well, how did you trick all these people for so long? <laughs> because, <laughs> I mean, God is, to me, is the planet and everything living. But like people that go to church and stuff just believe that there's one God for their church and their religion and everybody else is wrong, but the universe is too big for that. And that, yeah, yeah, so how? <laughs> I'm inebriated too, so you gotta forgive me. I don't know. <laughs> Talking about God and liquor. God and liquor. <laughs> she may have been my favorite person of the night, frankly. She was, she was pretty fantastic, it's true. Okay, so so many things in what he said. Yeah. The, the first part that got me was the asking God, how did God trick us for so long? What does that say about his view of God? That God isn't who he thought God was. And? And who he was taught God was. And? It seemed as though he was having issue really with the church and what he was taught and what the church continues to teach and perpetuate mm -hmm. about God and how that contradicts his own experience of God. Yes. Not, how did we mess it up for so long? Yeah. But... How did you trick us yeah. for so long? Whatever he thinks of the church and the, the, the individualist gods within the church, and I don't think he's wrong about that. Right, right. His sense of God is somebody who would trick us. Well, it's almost like he thinks the church is the mouth of God. Oh, well, that's interesting. Maybe so. Because if, if, if he feels like he's been deceived or tricked... Mm -hmm 
by God by way of the church because right. the church is, is what he was commenting on, really. Yes. The issue that he was having was what the church teaches. Yes. Then it kind of seems like he's he's equating God with the church in a way like the church is, is God's mouthpiece. Yes. Not an uncommon view. Right. Which is one of the reasons so many people leave. Sure. And one of the reasons so many people are slavish to the word of the church. Yeah. But it really, when he said, how did you trick us? I, I mean, we've talked a lot about the character of God and how mm-hmm. hard it is to help people really get a handle on the character of God. Yeah. That God is not a trickster. God is not deceptive. God is not burying fake dinosaur bones for us to discover in order to throw us off and, tri- and, and test us into not believing in creation or believing in creation right. or whatever it is. Right. Instead, God is open and we are limited yeah but i was just really struck by his language of how did you trick us for so long yeah it felt a little fatalist didn't it yeah and and i don't think that was inebriation talking no i don't either i don't either i think i think people as because i love the fact that he said and i'm inebriated I think as people become more inebriate, inebriated, and I'm not inebriated, I can't even <laughs> say it. I don't think it's that they speak less truth. I think the filters come off. Yes. But sometimes I think people are so much less inhibited. Well, yes. Right? So what they're saying, there may actually be more truth, their truth, mm-hmm. small t truth, uh, in it than if they were stone cold sober. Right. If they were stone cold sober and someone said, you think this. They might kind of have a feeling that they think it, but their frontal cortex and yeah. their spirit would say, no, uh-huh. you don't actually think that. Sure. And so I wonder just how many people walk around deeply feeling that God is tricking them. Because that's all a test is, right? Mm-hmm. A test is a trick. Yeah. It's a way of trying to get you to go wrong. Mm-hmm. And God doesn't try and get us to Mm-mm. go wrong. No. On the other hand, God and liquor is something I can get behind. <laughs> <laughs> There's my next sermon right there. So can we talk God and liquor right now? Maybe like, what's the point of cockroaches? Like other animal, other insects have purposes, but I don't know what the point of a cockroach is, and they're really disgusting. Why the fuck? That's pretty much it. What the fuck? What the fuck? What's happening here? Why? How is any of this? What? That's it. Yeah, um, as a University of Tennessee sports fan, why must we go uh, years and years and years? Why w- why must I feel like a Chicago Cubs fan for all these years? Um, as somebody who watched the University of Tennessee win the national championship at the age of, I think I was six, and it was 1998, I've waited my whole life for just a smidge more glory and every single time. Why must I be so disappointed, God? I think what the fuck is a better question. Yeah, you might want to use that one. Okay, right. I think it encompasses a lot more. When I meet God, what's my first question? First question is, where's the beef? JK, what's the deal with jellyfish? All right, when you meet God, what's your first question? What is your guilty pleasure? Oh, uh, when you meet God, what's your first question? Am I forgiven for my sins? <laughs> and God says yes, and then you say no. <laughs> <laughs> he says yes, and I'm like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> if God were a spirit, what would he, she, it, they be? To me, yeah. to me, she would be a scotch. Because okay. I love scotch. You do. So like you, this. Can you, can you describe the, the aspect? What about scotch? So like when there's no bite, and it just goes smooth down your throat. Okay. Smoky. Yeah, the smokiness too. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I love yeah the smoothness of scotch. You know, okay. yeah. Okay, so God is kind of smoky and smooth. Yes. Smo- yeah, yeah, yeah. And soothing and female. Yeah, that. like a jazz singer on a piano, that kind of shit. Nice. Yeah. Is she lying on the piano? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm she's smoking. Her. <laughs> right? like she's got That's a- my idea of God. Yeah. That. That's awesome. That's Thanks. awesome. What have you got? See, that's really interesting because I think I would say. Uh, God's a vodka because it's 
it's you can put it pretty much anything. It's always there, and it's subtle. But if you look for it, you can taste like you can find it if you look for it. Oh, uh, okay. That works. So right, that's so my answer for that. Up. If God were a spirit, what would he, she, it, they be? Uh, I'm gonna have to go with gin, which they would say because it's my favorite, but that's not true. Because it's just like a very full, herbal, all-encompassing drink. Natural. Natural. Yeah, the garden. Like the it's like, a, you know? The Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden, so. This is so fun. Ooh. I think God... <laughs> I think God would be like a... A sherry. Not... I don't think everyone likes it. Really dry sherry. Okay. Yeah. Like a like a Fino Rancio Sherry. I think it's an acquired taste. If you know going in what it is, sure, you might like it. If you don't, it's going to rub you the wrong way. Yeah. I like it. I, I would say a, a floral. I would say a floral, like, gin gin. Botanical. Botanical gin. A sipping gin. A sexy gin. A sipping sexy gin. If God were a spirit, what would he, she, it, they be? Um, I, I'm such a whiskey sucker, it's hard to say no. But, you know, if we wanted to go off the rails, I would say God might be an absinthe. From my limited experience in absinthe, which is almost entirely at Tempered in uh, Germantown, Nashville. I think she'd be tequila. Like, not for everyone. But once you get to know her, if you get to know her in like a right way and you like use her appropriately, then you really like her and you appreciate her and you can get behind her. I think I'd say vodka because it's it's a blank canvas and so many people make it into what they want it to be. So I would say gin. I think God would definitely be gin. Very smooth. You know, uh, you can't really see it. It's all around you. Uh, you know, very, very clear, but very crisp at the same time. Something light and fresh of the earth. Yeah. You just summed it up really well. <laughs> I can't really top that, can I? Probably not. God would be vodka, because vodka is everything. Vodka tastes like whatever you pair with, like tofu. So God, <laughs> God pairs well. With everything. <laughs> You've never heard that tofu tastes like what you pair with? No, I haven't heard that. Oh, vodka. Okay, no, that's just like me. I'm like two hours into this mess, so. Tequila. Because it's unpredictable. Are you interested in answering a question? Damn right. Okay. Just to preface, I am not religious. That's good. That's perfect. If God were a spirit, as in spirit... What would he, she, and they be? Gin. Why? Because gin has both character and cleanliness. And I feel like whiskey is a little bit unclean. And vodka has no character. So you can't really, like, give a personality to vodka. But gin, gin has a personality. Every gin that I've ever tasted is substantially different from another gin. And gin is so clean. You can drink it all day, all night, and you can wake up the next morning and you drink gin with breakfast. And so, like, I believe that if a spirit were going to make, or if a god were going to make a spirit, that spirit would hold the spirit of cleanliness but personality. God is a spirit. The Holy Spirit. I would think a gin and tonic. It's a very... You know, I, it, it is it's very clear, it's very precise on what it is. Very pristine. For, yes. I always feel smarter when I drink a gin and tonic. If God were a spirit, what would he or she, it, they be? Ooh. If God were a spirit, it would be Irish whiskey. Because God just puts us through trials and tribulations and God is semi-transparent but not completely just like a good Irish whiskey it has that beautiful golden color however it's not completely see-through God tests us and he sees us and he gives us theology that requires thought and diction and it's something that needs to be treaded through and designed and seen through and both are complicated 
but you don't know they're complicated when you look at them and for the first time. Like a, a red breast 18. Okay, so our friend uh, that was talking about gin and how one of its qualities is cleanliness, and they <laughs> compare that he compared the cleanliness of gin to the cleanliness of God. And I mean, I, you know, a lot of the a lot of the answers that we got to that question about if if God were a spirit, what spirit would God be, had to do with like clear, clean or like adheres to whatever you put it with mm -hmm. kind of ideas, mm -hmm. which is interesting because it just kind of says, well, a lot of people think that God is whoever you want God to be. Yes. God is whoever you yes. think God is. Yeah. And to some degree, I'm glad that, I'll just say that, that most of the folks that were attending the, the festival were millennials. And so generationally, the idea that my God and my view of God and my theology isn't isn't necessarily yours and doesn't necessarily have to be. Mm -hmm. That part I really appreciate. Yeah, I agree. You know, I, I'm not going to go as far as, you know, God is whoever you think God is because no. God is God. Right. But to say my idea of God and your idea of God don't have to be the same and it doesn't mean that we don't worship or acknowledge the same God. Right. Right, because we're we're human beings, and our right. whatever we're doing, it's going to be limited. Yes. I love too the the guy who talked about absinthe, yeah, and the one who talked about sherry, yeah, because they both got into this complexity about God and about. I don't think they both used acquired taste, but there was that sense that you had to kind of get to know God. Uh -huh. I right? like that, which I thought was very interesting. Mm -hmm. Of course, they both you know discounted it in one way or another. The one guy went on about which kind of sherry it was and Fino sure. and then he said something completely that makes no sense at all but that that was okay because you know he was probably fine with God just mm -hmm. didn't really know a sherry that well um, <laughs> probably but I, you know but but I like that they got on to that yeah but my favorite as you know is is the one who started talking about Irish whiskey yeah yeah and I loved her mm -hmm. not only because of the things she was saying about whiskey but because she was clearly coming out of the Irish experience yeah that sense of testing us and all of that if you think about that with the other speakers it wouldn't have made sense in the context but with her talking about irish whiskey and the history of ireland and that sense of irishness that i don't know how many of our listeners grew up with that or have spent any time in that but it's very it's very much the texture of irish and yeah. ireland and and the fact that she named an irish whiskey that is not the one that you find on every bar counter mm -hmm. just made me adore her. Yeah. But there was that cultural sense that we're going to hear actually in another sequence entirely that just absolutely endeared me to her in a particular mm -hmm. way. So yeah. it was interesting. Was wine the best choice at Cana and what variety? No, I think wine was great. I mean, it has to, it has to, it has to be a Malbec red. Like, it has to be. There it is, right? Right? <laughs> I think wine is a fantastic choice, but it should have been a bubbly, maybe? <laughs> Celebratory. Lighten the mood. Lighten the mood. Well, maybe it was. Uh, maybe it was. I don't know. I'd probably go for, for a wine, I think. I'd probably go for a, uh, a moderately sweet white. Um, something that kind of can appeal to the masses, so, you know, everybody's, it's accessible. Uh, okay. In, in there for everybody and not completely dehydrating. Nice. Um, maybe a Riesling, maybe a Riesling. <laughs> My favorite wine is Rosa Regale. It's a sparkling red. Okay. And I just, I it's nice. fun, it's yeah. red, it's classic, but it's like different and unique. And that nice. seems like Jesus to me. Nice. Oh, oh yes, Kingdom. Yeah. Oh yeah, got this. Yeah, yeah. I used to have long hair and a beard and people called me Jesus, so I got you. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, yeah. for your first miracle, when you turned the water into wine, was wine really a good choice? No, it should have been bourbon. Okay. Absolutely should have been bourbon. I mean, wine's okay, but the tannins, people are picky. We should have gone straight to bourbon. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't understand. Like, maybe if there's a second coming. We can work on that, but there you go. So here's my question then. Yes. If Jesus had turned water into bourbon, which crude bitter would he have used? Oh, oh look at you. Put me on the spot. He would have used the Lindsay bitters. Okay. And you all will have to Google it to look up and find out what the Lindsay bitters are. Okay. You can find them on the website. Well, um, O to the M to the G, 
yes, it was the best choice because it allows us to be free to talk about our feelings, connect with other people. Jesus needed a way in to talk to people, so why not relax with a good glass of wine? I would say any wine that makes you feel good about being here on this earth and participating in the betterment of people. I think beer would have been okay too, but I I think a good cab would have been perfect. I think that is absolutely. I, I love cab, and it's you know it's not too sweet. It's nice and smooth. Not too many tannins. It's fantastic. So I think that that would have been absolutely the perfect choice, and probably what Jesus wanted. Um, definitely wine. I don't know why anyone would want anything else but wine. And any white or red Chardonnay for a good white. Cabernet Sauvignon for a good red. And then a sangria if you're sitting outside in the sun. Just take some fruit, take some wine. Any wine will do. So Jesus is Jesus. And if he chose to turn water into wine, that was the best choice. Okay. Now, I personally would have turned it into bourbon. Okay. But since he did turn it into wine, okay. the varietal, I would have done, I don't know, maybe a Cabernet Franc. Or what do you think the bartenders serve in heaven? Say a nice, fresh gin gimlet. That's what I would need. Nice. I'd say a good old-fashioned. think the bartenders serve in heaven? Yes. Absolutely, is the whiskey. Whiskey, okay. Single malt whiskey. Oh, okay. So we went to Japanese. Oh. Japanese. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's that's what that's what my uh, favorite. Yeah. What do you think the bartenders serve in heaven? Well, I never thought about that before. I have a simple answer. <laughs> bourbon. <Yeah. laughs> there are a lot of bourbon and whiskey people here tonight. It's kind of fascinating. All right. Neat. Just neat. <laughs> in neat. heaven. Definitely need. <laughs> Pre-prohibition bourbon. Okay. Never on the rocks. On the rocks will be in hell for sure. What do I think the bartenders serve in heaven? I think the bartenders in heaven serve pure happiness. So whatever makes you happy, that's what they're going to give you. No, wine, wine. I think the bartenders in heaven serve wine. Port bin number 27. <laughs> what do you think bartenders serve in heaven? Vodka Red Bulls. Well, because everyone's having a great time already, so it's going to keep them up, but they're going to be drunk the entire time. And that's what I like. What do I think the bartenders serve in heaven? I hope, old-fashioned, with a wonderful cherry that has been fermented perfectly by God's hands. Bartenders would serve either mimosas or bellinis, because in heaven, every day is brunch. Yes, every day is brunch. Absolutely. And my thought was in old fashions because everybody has their own twist on the old fashioned. So some people include their own specific like whiskey. Some people include their own specific bourbon. Everybody has their own version. I believe like being raised a good Catholic girl, every angel has his own version of the old fashioned. So old-fashioned is almost like your confirmation saint. If you get confirmed in the Catholic Church, you pick your own saint, and it's your own personal connection to God, and that's exactly what exactly. your own version of old-fashioned would be. Every old-fashioned is your way to heaven. Like. Yes. So I'm hearing we do first communion, then confirmation, and then, then old-fashioned. Old fashioned. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> My students are getting confirmed in two weeks. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes, well done. And now I'm going to have to go out and have an old-fashioned. Okay, I feel as though it is incumbent upon me to say, incumbent <laughs> upon me to say, that the Catholic Church does not teach <laughs> that every angel has its own version of the old-fashioned. First of all, at that particular, that particular <laughs> night, so many people mention the old-fashioned, which makes me think that it is the cocktail du jour of people who don't drink cocktails. Right, right. The idea that every angel has its own version of the old-fashioned. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, we only hear of the archangels, first of all. <laughs> we only get Gabriel and Michael. <laughs> right. Those are really the only ones we That's get. That's really it. Okay. And so Michael is the slayer of dragons, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking version from Michael is what? It's 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 hardcore. It's rye. It's it's like 
Like 100 percent right, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Seriously. Okay, and and remind our listeners what goes into an old fashioned, just in case they're not drinkers. Let's see. So an old fashioned is going to be uh, whiskey, usually bourbon, but not necessarily. It could be rye. It gets uh, sugar mm-hmm. muddled. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be the angel part. That would be the, the angel, right? The angel part. It it's gets... a do not be afraid part. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Typically, it gets a cherry and an orange. Right, like, and there's more muddling of the orange, right? And there's right? muddling of those things, right. Okay, and muddling, just again, for people who don't drink, is the squishing about in order to make the flavor come out. Right. Which, and, which yeah. is where we get the muddled right, idea, right? Right, right, And there's a little bit of water that goes into the... So so the sugar, you're, you're either using like a simple syrup, which is essentially just pre-muddled sugar. Right. Or, or you're adding a little bit of water to create this little bit of a syrup that's at the bottom. So, right. so an old fashioned is whiskey forward, but it's sweet at the same time. You get this and sugary. Orange. It's basically yeah. whiskey and orange. Yeah, it's whiskey and orange. Yeah. So the Archangel Michael, being mm-hmm. the Slayer of Dragons, right? We're thinking 100 percent rye. Yes. Or I hate to say this, and and you must forgive me. As much as I would like the Archangel Michael. To do kind of a really raw bathtub whiskey <laughs> kind of thing. Right. I picture Michael, um, oh, I don't know, a little more dapper than that. Um, okay. <laughs> so, so it's a little gonna, more angelic than that. Yeah, so it's going to have to be, it's going to have to be a really good rye, but like a hearty rye. Sure. Then we have Gabriel. Mm-hmm. And Gabriel is the one who came to announce that the baby mm-hmm. Jesus was going to be born. Mm-hmm. Ah, is Gabriel. <laughs> Yeah. What's what's Gabriel's base? Oh, it's gonna be a very gentle bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> like a like a like an almost bourbon? Like a barely bourbon. Like a barely bourbon. <laughs> like very a bourbon Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> so so what I'm hearing from you is that that Gabriel's version of the old fashioned is going to be barely bourbon. Mm-hmm. I'm hearing sun kiss soda. Yes. <laughs> Yes, or orange cream soda. Oh God! It could be like I'm a, sorry, sorry. It could be like a Stewart's cream soda, <laughs> and a little bourbon, a little okay. berry bourbon. And so again, friends, I I I, f- I feel the need to say, this is not what the Catholic Church teaches. <laughs> And so as they go on about this, <laughs> and if your church teaches this, they're just really wrong. Well, or interesting. We'd like to hear from you. If this we is want, what your we church... might want to interview you. <laughs> or your pastor. Because if your pastor is talking about Stuart's soda <laughs> in the context or of... Or Old Fashions and Angels. I just can't. I just can't. She was Wings awesome. Wings folded. I so like... At the bar. <laughs> Well, there's the problem in Revelation, too, where the seraphim are covering their mouths and their feet and clearly their genitals. <laughs> so I've got all of them, like the multiple wings, drinking the old-fashioned somehow. The, how are they holding the glass? <laughs> With a straw. <laughs> oh, okay, I love this woman. I can't even tell you how much I love this woman. But there we are. <laughs> okay. Anything else about these women before we move on? <laughs> I love them. Okay, it gets better. <sighs> okay. Oh, definitely whiskey sours. Okay, so why a whiskey sour? Because it's just ephemeral. I mean, it's just the perfect combination of elements in the earth, right? That's it. What do you think the bartenders serve in heaven? You know, my brain instantly went to like marshmallowy, like fluff. Yes. Oh God, that sounds amazing. What What am I thinking of? Like the vodka that's like the whipped vodka? It's got to have whipped vodka in it. Whatever it is. I feel like everything. Okay. Right. It has to. It has to meet everyone's needs. If it's heaven, it's got to. It's got to have a little bit of everything for everyone. Or so that everyone is happy. Or because it's heaven, you just taste what you want because. And it, it, yep, and yep. It's perfection for you. Yep. I that could be. Yeah. So for you, it's marshmallow whips. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's what I would instantly think of, but maybe it would be younger. <laughs> what do you think bartenders serve in heaven? 
I think bartenders serve a little bit of sunshine, a little bit of rain, and a whole lot of earth. And that's what makes heaven. Only whatever, only, only whatever falls from the skies, I guess. Yeah, and that must be what's in this cocktail theology. <laughs> I love that we're part of heaven. I love that too. It's so isn't, nice to know isn't that. Isn't that great? Like, the drinks fall from the sky, mm -hmm. and that's what goes into cocktail theology. Oh, that was a very sweet thing to it say. It was so sweet. It was actually a really sweet um, weekend that we had it there. It was. I'm very, very grateful to John Yeager, who's mm -hmm. the organizer of this through Poor Taste, P-O-U-R-T-A-S-T-E, and all of his crew, including Jacob and... All of the people who were working on yeah. it that we talked to and didn't talk to. It was yeah. really a phenomenal event. It was. And so many people, most of them volunteers, really wonderful. It was a lovely thing to be invited to and to be able to do. I think that the opportunity to talk about faith in a way that was not fraught yeah. mattered. Yeah. It really struck me that, as I recall, we only had one person turn us down. Yeah. Everyone else wanted to try and answer the questions. And some of them were just being lighthearted and playful. Sure. But most were just really thinking through, what does it look like? Who is God? What's God like? Mm -hmm. It was lovely to be able to catch people doing exactly what we do. I mean, not right. the getting completely <laughs> inebriated part, <laughs> but, the, but, the, but the sitting down and talking about yeah. God and faith and roller coasters and sex and life and whatever comes, whatever comes. You and I talk so much and talk with our friends who listen to us so much mm -hmm. that getting the opportunity to talk to people who may never ever right. listen to us about this was really special and lovely it was really really nice and there were lots of folks that subscribed to us just on the spot which right. i thought was really really sweet yeah and the people there that listen to podcasts regularly lots of them lots of them so i think it was a really good thing for us to be a part of that's right it was uh, it was a lot of fun. So I, I hope we get to do it again next year. And if we do, we'll for sure let you guys know so that you can possibly come and join us. Well, we were invited. I think we need to go back. Yeah, I think we'll. John I think we'll asked need to us go back. back. So um, so yeah, it was it was a really great time to to have uh, impromptu conversations with people that exactly. we wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to to talk to before so exactly we love to have impromptu conversations with people and one of the ways that we can do that is if you invite us to come and do cocktail theology live at your place right we're we getting ready it. to do one of those we are june 9th we're going to be doing a cocktail theology live right here in nashville you can get tickets for that on our website schoolforseekers.com that's s-c-h-o-o-l-f-o-r-s-e-e-k-e-r-s.com very good Thank you. And that'll be here in Nashville. Tickets are nominal. You'll get food, you'll get drink, you'll get new music from Benton, which is yep. worth paying for all by itself. <laughs> and conversation and audience participation will be a lot of fun. And then remember that we're also going to be at Wild Goose this year. We are. And so we'll be talking there. And, you know, we won't be talking officially very long, but we would love to talk to you about important things and have a glass of wine. And let me tell you right now, if it's a Cabernet Sauvignon, it will be tannic. There will be tannins. <laughs> there will be tannins. <laughs> I think I may be done now. <laughs> Can I complain more about what people said at some sure. point? Sure. Thank uh, you, yeah, baby. Yeah, we'll do that later. Okay, shut, off, shut off the microphone now. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for listening always. Tell your friends. Yeah, and, please uh, tell your friends. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.